Hey guys, hope you're well. So today I'm actually going to talk about living in Australia. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my whole Australia experience. For some reason I always get asked about like, I don't know, what are you doing there? How long are you going to be there for? What made you move? And stuff. Also, before I actually moved here, I was like actively looking for guest resources about um, what it would be like to live in Australia being a black person. Is Australia racist like everyone thinks it is? Yeah, cost of living versus salaries and all that other good stuff. So I was a little bit sort of apprehensive about the move and just wanted to have some information and I couldn't find any. So I will give you my two cents on living in Australia, okay? Okay, so first question I always get asked is what the fuck are you doing there? Um, I don't know. I, I moved because my boyfriend's Australian, he lives here, and you know, it's easier to moan if you live in the same country. I'm just kidding. Before I actually started dating him, I was considering the move because I was desperate to leave London. Don't ask me why. There's a whole, I'm gonna make a whole separate video about why I wanted to leave London. It was like, I was being a child, but I just, I wanted to get out of London and just run away. And my sister was like, Australia? Uh, Australia, no. Like, yeah, no, I can't really leave my family. But then, funnily enough, she then relocates to Dubai, my other sister relocates to Brussels. So I was just like, well, what's the point? Um, and then funnily enough, I started dating Kevin. Kevin's Australian, then he moved. Um, we were long distance for six months. Then I came to visit, and then I moved. So that's a short story, the short version of me moving to Australia. But, like I said, I will do a proper video on why I wanted to leave London how I moved, how I met Kevin, everything, and I'm gonna call it my love story because it's pretty epic. Um, next question is how am I here? Sort of like how do I manage to stay in Australia? Am I on a visa? Am I living off Kevin? Am I on his de facto? I'm actually here on a 457 visa, also known as the temporary business bracket long stay visa and basically what that means is a business sponsors you to come and work for them and they hire you and the government gives you a visa for four years and you stay and work you don't have to stay with the same company for the entire four years you can move as many times as you want the only thing is you have to make sure that the next company that's employing you is happy to sponsor you and not just that but they were also registered to sponsor you and are um, willing to pay you the minimum at least the minimum for that skill set. So Australia has Australia has minimum wages based on your job title. So there isn't like a blanket minimum wage. They're called awards. So the company has to pay the minimum award for the job that you're doing. It's, it's to be honest, most companies will know whether or not they can talk to people. So my advice, if you're looking for a job and wanting to move to Australia, just write it on the top of your CV. You will need a sponsorship or will need four five seven sponsorship before you send your resume to people, so they know what they're dealing with. And most of the companies here get it, so they will understand that if you are someone, if they really really wanted you, they they would need to sponsor you, which is not a big deal. Next thing is just about nights out, nightlife, eating, drinking, things like that, sort of entertainment. Honestly, like, I can only speak for Perth, it's not that busy, but what there is, is really, really, really good quality. Honestly, the food is so fresh, and the import tax is so high here that a lot of the food that you eat is Australian made and grown. So the stuff doesn't travel too far before it gets to your table it's all really good food all fresh food Australians are foodies they love their food and like everything is just so nice like it's hard not to put weight on here so if you come here to visit definitely go out to a few of the restaurants brunch is huge in Perth so places to go to brunch go and check out a few of the cafes definitely check out Tuck Shop check out the Beaufort Street Merchant lots of places that do really really Good, honest, rustic food that's just so filling and beautiful and nice. So, oh, and there's a place called Sauce as well. They do really good, like, um, free range vegan food. Um, not, it's not all vegan, but like, just ethically sourced food. Um, responsibly sourced food, basically. It's a really, really good restaurant. The weather is beautiful, so there's always outdoorsy stuff that you can do. There's always festivals. Um, it's really good to go down to Margaret River, so there's the wine regions. Go look at the vineyards. Go to Dunsborough. Um, it's just so many beautiful places in Western Australia to visit. So if you do end up in Perth, definitely, definitely go exploring. Um, just get get out on a boat. Just go 
spot dolphins, go and look at whales, like just go out in nature and just see like actual marine life, try and get out to Rottnest Island, like there's just so much to do. Definitely entertainment wise, you will not be short of things to do. Um, it's not crazy busy like London, it's just more like a chilled out kind of environment. There are still clubs, don't get me wrong, there are still good sort of night spots to go to and hang out. Um, but generally speaking, like it's more of a daytime kind of city path it is anyway. Alright, so making friends. This is probably the hardest part of being um, so far away from home and you probably would struggle the most with this. That's why I say definitely try and go to a hostel first and even if you spend a week at a hostel, it's still a good way to make friends. I did it the wrong way around because I obviously I have been dating, I was dating Kevin for a year a year before I officially moved to Perth so I just when we when I arrived he'd already got an apartment ready for us and he was just like right here's home so I didn't get a chance to make my own friends all my friends were his friends so for me trying to make my own friends after that was really, really difficult because it's really easy to become complacent when you already have your own like you're with someone you're in a relationship so it's really hard to kind of break out of that and go and meet new people um, aside from my work friends obviously um, so I would say it is difficult because again Perth is just a small town and a lot of people have gone to school together have gone traveling together they all know each other so the only people that would really be not so clicky would be the ones that are just arriving to people that are living in a hostel um, yeah or others that have just arrived and you don't know who they are um, there's a huge expat community but it's just really hard getting in, getting in touch with everyone but there will be like um, there will be societies you can find about on the internet there will be blogs and forums and people that you can like reach out to that will be just as new as you are and will be more than happy to show you around and look after you while you're here and the people are nice it's just they're so used to those I've grown up with that it's sometimes hard for you to kind of break into the groups so definitely bear that in mind when you're moving over I would say even if you've got a partner here insist on staying in a hostel for a few days insist on actually finding your own wings by yourself initially because it will make a, it will make a world of difference to you just having your own thing your own friends to hang out with just makes a whole lot of difference cost of living versus salaries I'm just going to base the rest of the financial information on WA, so like Perth, where I live, Western Australia. Um, honestly speaking, the salaries in Australia are really good. I'm not just saying that. Like, I live in London, I worked in London. In comparison to what I was getting in London for what I was doing, the salaries here just make no sense to me. But bear in mind as well, like, locations will determine what salary you get. Um, and also, the cost of living is a lot higher here. Like, for instance, a pint costs like $9.00 which is equivalent of like six pounds for like a box standard pint. Yeah, it's crazy expensive. Grocery shopping for an individual normally costs about $50 a week. You can get away with paying a little bit less if you go to the markets and if you uh, buy your food in bulk. But generally speaking, if you're gonna do a grocery shop for one person, it's about $50. Rent wise, if you are getting an apartment on your own, at the moment, rent is very affordable in Perth. You'd be looking at $350 a week for rent for a one bedroom apartment. House shares, there's loads and loads of house, like um, property shares and house shares as well. There's also lots of hostels. So hostels run from about 50 bucks a week to about $150 a week. Um, it's a lot cheaper than getting an apartment. You meet a lot more people. It's a lot more friendly and you, it, it could make your experience that much better. Living in Australia is, I guess, what everyone says it is. It's very, very laid back. Um, you obviously still work very hard but then there isn't that kind of stress put on you and there isn't that pressure put on you that you um it's a lot more laid back but the expectations are the same so people will, will do business with you based on um how easy you are to work with and they will be loyal to you if you are somebody they enjoy working with so definitely make sure that you have the right level of integrity and you will get repeat business from people bear in mind though that you will have people that won't use you because they are loyal to other people so Bear that in mind, but still go out and do your networking, still go out and meet people, join a rotary group, just like become part of the community and 
your life will just be so much easier in terms of working. Um, I'm just speaking from working from um, a recruitment perspective, but again, any kind of industry you work in, and if you have to reach out to new clients and do business development, then yeah, just networking is really important. Loyalty and integrity is massive here. So you just have to be someone that they actually respect and want to do business with, and they'll keep doing business with you. Um, another thing you have to bear in mind is that a lot of the a lot of the companies people hire their family members, and so you just have to get used to that and get over it because that's just the way it is. They look after each other, so that's something you have to bear in mind and just like deal with. And yes, you can wear thongs to work, but obviously when you get to work, get to your desk, you better take them, flip flops off, and you need to put your shoes on. By the way, thongs are flip flops, so yeah, wear flip flops. But they call them thongs here, so it's a bit odd. Um, sweets are called lollies. English people are called poms. And obviously they are different to pronunciation for words like yogurt, they call it yogurt, but that, Americans see that as well, so that's not massive difference. The next one is like racism in Australia. I won't say Australia is a racist country per se. I would say the government have a little few, few kind of questionable policies on immigration. Um, yeah, that's kind of, I don't want to comment too much on it because it's not my country, not my people, but I do, I do think that a lot of the policies are very, very questionable. Um, but aside from that, I think it's just the fact that they're not as, the, the people in Australia just aren't as politically correct. And that's something that I had to come to terms with when I first arrived here because I found myself getting into so many arguments with people because of the things they'd say or how they'd say things and it just, you just have to um, appreciate that, I mean it's not, this isn't London, this isn't the UK so people's like description of things might not be the most politically correct and it doesn't doesn't always mean that they're racist, it just means they don't know any different. So don't come here on your high horse, don't come here thinking that you are better than anyone else because you know the politically incorrect way to say things. Just come with an open mind, an open heart, and um, if you feel, if you find there's an opportunity to tell somebody a different way to say things, just pick the way you say it to them, just pick the way you present it because it can, yeah. So <laughs> I'm just gonna put it out there. It's not that it's a racist country, it's just that it's not as politically correct as other places. So you will find that you um, are shocked a lot when you first arrive, um, but after a while, like you, you kind of see who the idiots are and who the actual people that don't know any different are and then you can sort of help where you are able to and just ignore the others that you don't like that aren't really worth your effort on. I don't know if I answered all the questions that you guys might have had. Oh another thing as well I wanted to mention as well if you're a girl that really is really into your hair, your makeup, your clothes, all that kind of stuff, girl, before you get here, do shopping like shop 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 because it's just there isn't there isn't that massive shopping culture here we just isn't there isn't a top shop I mean the sort of opening now Zara only just opened a week ago and that's in like Burragoon in the middle of um, in Garden City it's quite far away um, so we're, 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 top shop is about to open I think in November it's gonna open we've only just got a Zara there's no H&M um, there's no Mango, oh, she has a mango concession in a department store. There's a Mac, but there's no Mac Pro store. Um, yeah, there isn't as much of a shopping culture as there is in London, for instance, or other parts of the world. But um, there are some Australian brands that are still very, very good. Like, um, there's Cotton On, there's an Australian brand, I believe. I know they're in America as well, but I'm pretty sure they're an Australian brand. Um, there's Dottie, that's a good brand. There's Bardot, Colette do really good accessories and handbags. So there's some really good sort of local brands that I think you guys would really like if you came over. Um, it's just being open-minded and like trying out new things. But yeah, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, just leave them down below. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already. Thumbs up if you like this video. Thank you so much for your company and I shall see you guys in my next one.